Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at an important concept when working with relational databases and this concept is called normalization. And what normalization is, it's a process by which you try to define and design your database so that you eliminate as much redundant information as possible. Let's take a look at an example of a real-world scenario and what we're going to try to do is look at an invoice that we might see from a typical company and how we might represent that information that we want to store in that invoice inside of our database. And then we'll take a, look, take a look at some of the normalization procedures that are out there that we can go ahead and eliminate a lot of the redundancy inside of our database. So let's say I go to an electronics store and I'm going to draw a real rough representation of an invoice here. I go to my local electronics store and I buy a new computer monitor. So what is this invoice or my receipt going to look like? Well, it's probably going to have, let's say, billing information up here. Or uh, let's say customer information. Let's get rid of that. So I might have some customer information on the top of the invoice here. I'll have uh, order information. I'll probably have line item information, what I actually purchased. I'll have um, total and tax information. I'll have billing information. And I might have, as part of my customer info and my order info, I might have ship to information on a typical invoice. In this example, I probably won't have any ship to information because it's just a monitor that I'm going to pick up and walk out of the store with. But if I went to an electronics store and I bought, you know, a, a big screen TV or a refrigerator or a washer dryer or something like that, I'll probably have ship to information. If I don't normalize all of the information that's here on this particular invoice, I'm going to have a lot of redundant information. Let's say I create a table, and in this table, I'm I don't have anything normalized. I'm just going to represent this invoice. I'm going to have this invoice table. What are the types of things that I'm going to have on this invoice table? Well, I'm probably going to have a unique identifier like an invoice number. I'll have customer information. So I might have customer last name, customer first name, customer address, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'll have the line item information, so I'll have product, I'll have, I'm running out of space here, um, I'll have um, quantity, uh, I'll also have obviously stuff with something like price, I'll write it down here. And then for my billing information, you know, I'll have obviously like customer billing name. I'll have uh, maybe credit card number. Um, I'll have invoice total. Uh, I might, like I said, have ship to information because the ship to may not be the same thing as my customer address. They may ship it to another place. So I'll have a ship address. I'll have, you know, ship city, all those different things. So if I just buy one thing on this invoice, I can kind of represent it this way. I can represent my invoice table like this. Uh, because if there's only one line item on a particular invoice, um, this is kind of an okay representation. But what happens when I start having multiple values? What happens when I start having multiple line items? I might have multiple billing pieces where uh, the uh, person who purchases, maybe they have a gift card 
and they have a check and they have a credit card so they're going to make a combination of different billing payments um, multiple line items um, which might have different ship to pieces of information which could mean I have different tax rates for each one of those so if I have a really complex invoice, I'm going to have a lot of redundant information, right? I'm going to have things like, let's say, customer invoice, zero, zero. I, should, should, I shouldn't say customer invoice, just invoice. And then my last name, my first name, my address, you know, pro product, A1, I had a quantity of two. Price was fifty dollars. My billing name is going to be the same thing. My credit card number one two three. If I have a ton of line items that are associated with this, you know, I'm going to have invoice zero 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 one. I'm going to have Ostrowski again. I'm going to have Chris again. I'm going to have product A two with a quantity of four that has a price of two hundred. My billing information, again, is going to be Ostrowski. My credit card number is going to be Ostrowski. My ship to address, ship to city. I'm going to have that information over and over again. Um, I buy a third item, you know, my invoice, 0001. Same last name, same first name. Product is going to be A3. I bought one of those. That costs $1,000. Ship to name, uh, billing name, credit card information, ship to city. I'm going to have this information duplicated over and over again. It makes it really, really inefficient for you to store your information in an Oracle database this way, or any relational database for that matter. It also cuts down on the amount of flexibility that we can have in terms of slicing and dicing the information. I may want to uh, query on how many products I'm going to, you know, I've sold in the last month. If I've broken that out into its own table, I only have to search that table. I don't have to have this gargantuan invoice table where I'm going to gather all of this information and have to search through all of those different pieces. Uh, it makes it a heck of a lot easier for me to uh, have a lot more flexibility in terms of my reporting requirements, in terms of my security requirements, in terms of all of the different things that we want to do uh, in, in terms of uh, working with the complex data inside my organization. And this is just one example. This is just an invoice. You know, we're going to have different tables that interface with this invoice information, like warehouse information, uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable. Uh, we may have interfaces that look at the information in my invoice table and deal with um, our suppliers, our vendors, who uh, may monitor our warehousing totals to say, okay, um, my company is running out of product A1, I'm going to ship them a whole bunch of new information. If I've stored all of this in one table, uh, I'm going to have a lot of different access to this table. I'm going to have access for transactions as people buy new things in my store. I'm going to have uh, operational and analytical access where people are going to be querying this table. It's going to put a heavy burden on this uh, table inside my database to maintain all that information. Performance is probably going to degrade as my company grows and I get uh, more and more retail centers, uh, this table is going to become pretty unwieldy in a really short period of time. So what are the types of things that we can do? Well, the obvious thing, like I said before, is to normalize this data and to try and break it out and reduce the amount of uh, redundancy that we have in our database as much as possible. Once we break those down into different pieces, we have a lot more flexibility in terms of managing our database, in terms of uh, writing other programs that interface with these tables and pull information from these tables uh, so that we have a better overall uh, design and a lot more flexibility to support our business. So I'm going to erase this right now. Whoa, didn't want to do that. That's pretty ugly. So let's go back in here. Still getting the hang of working with this tablet. So let me change my pen to a different color. Change it to something blue this time. And again, I'm going to kind of represent my invoice here. And again, what did we say here? We said we had line item data. We had order data or invoice information. We had ship to information. We had billing 
information. Uh, what else did we say we had here? Um, customer information. So if we break each one of those out into its own table, we can take a look at these different uh, pieces which we can consider to be entities and break those out. So let's take a look at our order information. What are the types of things that we would have as part of our order? So if we define our order table, and again I'll put a box around this to kind of signify that it's a table, what are the types of things? Well, we probably want to have an order ID to uniquely identify the order. We can say that about any of these pieces that we're looking at, right? So for my customer entity, I'm going to draw a customer down here. We're probably going to have a unique customer ID. for my line items. I'm probably going to have a line item ID. What are the other types of things that we want to have here? Well, we want to associate the customer with an order but we don't want to have all of the customer information as part of my order table. It's redundant. It's having way too much information. If I just have that unique ID, I can just reference that customer ID. So as part of customer ID, uh, what else am I going to have? I'm going to have stuff like last name, first name, address, all the different address fields, and any other type of information. Now, as part of my order, I'm not storing all of this information over and over again. I'm just storing a number. So my customer ID might be 1001. So for order 2376, all we're storing is the unique customer ID. And based on that, I can then write SQL statements that say, OK, for this particular order, if I need to gather any of the customer information, I can use this number as a link to this guy and gather in all my necessary customer information. I'm not storing it over and over again here in the order. Another benefit of normalization is to make sure that uh, your data is organized and consistent. If I have to input customer information for every order that I'm out that's out there, what are the odds that every person who puts in that customer information puts it in exactly the same? Some people are going to write AVE instead of Avenue in the address. Some people are going to write Christopher as the, my first name instead of Chris. Some people are going to abbreviate you know, Colorado as CO. Some people are going to put in Colorado, the entire address. If I store the customer information here and I just reference that customer information, it cuts down on a lot of the potential mistakes that I can have out there. Same thing goes for line items, right? For every line item out there, I'm going to have an order ID that each one of these links back to. So his order ID is going to link to this guy right here. And then I can have each one of the individual line items. Line item, uh, still line item, let me get rid of that. We'll have fields like product, quantity, price, all of these different things. And again, for the order information, if somebody walks in and let's say they make a huge order or I'm dealing with a vendor and they buy you know, 5,000 different products, I'm not going to store all of that information in the order table. I'm just going to uh, store the order ID and the basic information about my customer or my vendor or whatever it is, and I'll have all of that other information inside of line items. So line item or my for order ID, I'll have 2376 and I'll have product 1, product 2, product 3, product 4. This, again, gives me a lot of flexibility as to how I'm going to set up the different types of pieces inside my Oracle database. When it comes time for me to query information, if I store, let's say, the order total here, uh, for this particular order total, it was $323.12. If I want to run a query that says, OK, how much did customer 1001, whoever that is, so, you know, I can say Ostrowski, 
how much money did Ostrowski spend in my store last month, last quarter, last year? I don't have all of this information that I have to pour through as, as part of my order. I just have the basic information stored here. So as soon as I identify Ostrowski as a customer ID 1001, I can then query my order table and I can sum up all of the different order totals based on a particular date for that, for that user. Another thing to remember is that Oracle is very efficient when it comes to doing things based on numbers. Uh, when it comes to you know summarizing information or querying information or doing any of those types of things, Oracle is a lot more efficient at saying, okay, find all of the customer ones as a 1,000 ones as opposed to finding customer last name equals text string Ostrowski, first name equals text string Chris, address equals text string you know whatever my address is. Oracle is a heck of a lot more efficient at saying, okay, find all of the uh, order orders that we've placed with this customer ID number, sum up the total, print out some kind of report for me. So the basics of normalization is to take all of the different entities that make up something that you want to represent inside your database and separate them out so that you have as little redundancy as possible. The only thing that we have redundant uh, for this particular example is in our line items we'll have something like order ID over and over again. So if I purchase five things inside my line items table, I'll have five entries that have an order ID of 2376. And again, that's a number I just made up. That's pretty good, you know, in terms of cutting down on the amount of redundancy that we have in our database. Uh, I don't store the customer information in every single one of the line items. I can join back and say, okay, what's the customer that goes along with this product? Well, i got to determine the order ID. Once I determine the order ID, I can determine the customer ID. Once I determine the customer ID, I can get all that information. I don't store all of my personal information in each one of the line items over and over again. Normalization is definitely an art more than a science. There are a couple of basic rules out there, and if you're interested in understanding the different normalization principles out there, I encourage you to look at uh, a couple of definitions. One is called first, actually the five, are called first, second, third, all the way down to fifth normal form. These are different classifications of how you organize your data inside your database. The goal for most applications is to get as close to third normal form as possible. I'm going to put this in a box here. Can you get to true third normal form in most applications? Usually not. Usually there's a little redundancy inside your database, and those are just design considerations based on the business rules uh, that you're trying to model inside your organization. But the goal usually is to try to get as close to third normal form as, as you possibly can. If you're interested in all of these, there's a lot of really good document pieces of documentation out on the internet that will give you definitions for first normal form, second normal form, all the way up through fifth normal form. But if you can get your database close to third normal form as much as possible, you're in pretty good shape.